<laughs> Take three. I was trying to turn the camera around and show the uh, Qualcomm system, but apparently that meant I had to end the video. I don't know. Anyways, so, I'm outside of Chicago. It's been an interesting couple days. It's Saturday, uh, August 5th. Um, Thursday. Thursday I met up my, with my trainer, Dia. Um, you know what? I'll tell that story some other time. He's a great guy. Originally from uh, Palestine. You know, he, he, his wife, and three kids live here in, uh, just outside of Chicago. He's at home because we're on a load going for Denver, and we cannot deliver that load until 6 a.m. Monday morning, local time, which is like 7 o'clock central. Um, it's about a 1,000 miles away, and it is not going to take us the weekend to drive it. So he's going to show up about 3 o'clock Chicago time, um, and we'll get going. I mean, we, what? 20 hours to get there, tops? That's nothing. Um, so Thursday, I met up with Dia in Gary at the Swift Terminal there, climbed aboard. Um, he, he was very vocal about me being comfortable in this truck, so, you know, I kicked my feet back, got my stuff set up on the top bunk that behind me in the top bunk. Um, we headed out of Gary down through Indianapolis and over to Cleveland, Ohio. It's not the way the GPS routed us, but, um, well, Dia doesn't like the GPS in the truck. He, uh, he does not believe that it is intelligent. Let that wasp go on about his way without the door being open to invite him in. He doesn't believe the GPS is smart enough to route people. He, uh, well, he changes his mind and decides not to go that way quite often. Um, yeah. Delivered in Columbus. We got there about midnight. Had to wait until they opened up in the morning and pulled back out of there at 8. Uh, he drove from... Columbus to Toledo. We got to Chrysler to Chrysler Toledo and sat around and waited until well the trailer was ready at two. The paperwork was not ready until almost three o'clock. That that was extremely annoying. I mean they sent us across the, across the Qualcomm what trailer we were picking up. Shipping office said, okay, go pick it up, pull around the building, you know, to, there was a, a spot where everybody was pulling up with their loaded trailer, getting their paperwork and leaving. So pull it up, you know, pull around the building, and once you hooked up, pre-tripped, and done that, you know, we'll have your paperwork ready. No. No, the paperwork is not ready. It was not ready for another 45 minutes that we just sat there. On duty, DOT clock, clock counting down. Yeah, but that's that's where they get us. It's not that that 14-hour clock is a bad thing necessarily. It's when the shippers and receivers fuck around and can't get you in and out of there, and that clock is ticking down. So, as we're on our way now to uh, Denver, Colorado. It's about a thousand miles away. Um, let's see. Thousand, a thousand and four? Yeah. A thousand four miles. Cannot deliver this one. Now, this is a time delivery. We have to deliver 6 a.m. Mountain Time Monday morning. Not before, not after. It's Saturday, and we're going to be pulling out of here today. We are going to get there probably Sunday afternoon if we screw around. I don't even know what that is. Um, yeah, if we screw around and take our time, we'll get there Sunday evening. Yay. 
But dude's a great guy. He's uh, going to try to get me my 11 hours, you know, as, as close to 11 hours as we possibly can every day. He says he's had people out of, you know, mentored and out in 23 days. So here we are, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, day three. So maybe another 21 days, another three weeks. Be out and get in my own truck. Yay. Um, I do not know when I'm going to be able to upload this video because Wi-Fi truck, truck stops cost money. It sucks, but, you know, I don't have any. So, oh, if you're one of those assholes who sees turn signals on a truck and think, damn, I better speed up so he doesn't get in front of me, fuck you. If you're one of those assholes who sees a two car length space in front of a truck and says, oh, that's an invitation for me to come over, fuck you, okay? God damn you people of Ohio and Indiana. Fuck you all. I'm driving down the turnpike, Interstate 80 Turnpike, heading for Chicago. We're planning, he planned on stopping here in Chicago so he could see his wife and kids. And I'm trying to be a safe driver. I'm trying to be safe, leave a space in front of me. Right? I get behind someone who's doing, you know, this is, D is an owner operator, so his truck is not governed to 62 like other Swift trucks are. <clears throat> he actually gets kicked along at 68, which is probably going to annoy the hell out of me when I get my own truck stuck at 62, but whatever. Tool along and coming up behind someone, so I know I need to get over. I turn my turn signal on, and people just, boom, shoot up, block me off so I cannot get over because they don't want to be stuck behind the truck. Now, let's not mention the fact that these people were not closing in on me until I turned on my turn signal. I had plenty of space until I turned on my turn signal. Turn on my turn signal, look again, and boom, this fucking car's flying up. Fuck you all. Starts raining. Well, it was actually raining hard enough that I had my wipers going on full, so I start leaving a two car length, you know, three car length space ahead of me, in case the idiots in the four wheelers decide to slam on their brakes, uh, I'm going to slam into them, that's, that's all there is to it. But apparently to everyone in Ohio and Indiana, leaving even a one car length space is an invitation to get into that fucking space and fuck the truck behind you. Y'all are fucking suicidal if you do that. Straight up suicidal. I cannot stop this truck doing enough. Straight up suicidal. Fuck you all. Because that... I mean, you're asking to die is what you're asking to do. If something happens, you have to slam on your brakes. Boom! I'm right into you. No chance. Don't do it. Give a trucker space. Look around you. Every single thing you see in your home. The very device you're watching this on brought to you by semi semi shut down five days later this country does not exist anymore everybody's riding for food because there's nothing left on the grocery store shelves respect the truckers and give them room you'll save your life you'll save their life and you'll save your way of life every time a truck gets an accident everyone wants to call on tighter and tighter restrictions from trucking which means more and more trucks sitting empty because people can't stand all the bullshit rules and restrictions that go with it. Now I happen to love the life and I happen to love driving. But... Okay. I'm going to stop ranting. Um, like I said, I have no Wi-Fi at the moment. I will upload this as soon as I can, but I have absolutely no idea when that's going to be. We're on our way to Denver, Chicago. We're going to be there early. Oh, yeah. Our, our load. This is great. Our load weighs, not counting the trailer that they put it in, 701 pounds for 80-some-odd pieces. That's right, 701 for 80-some-odd pieces. 
it's like driving an empty truck, really. I mean, the, you don't notice, you don't notice that little load. Remember once when I used to truck, uh, you know, for Wenger, I had a load of packing peanuts. They, sh they stuffed that trailer as full as they could, and that was only 1,200 pounds, so. Uh, th and then, you know, I also had rolls of uh, paper that I transported at one point, and three big rolls came in at 43,000 pounds, and, you know, again, that wasn't even half a trailer full, so. You never know how much is, uh, how much things are going to weigh. But yeah, 701 pounds. I'm like, yeah, I know Swift is making their money out of this, but is Chrysler really making the smartest decision? What the hell is that guy backing up to the pump for? I mean, I tell you, you getting sh oh. Fucking idiots. And I'm not talking about the truck drivers and truck stops, no. The fucking idiots are the four-wheelers who think that the truck side is just a bigger parking spot. Or, there's this kid last night in this car hauler. He had a pickup truck with a trailer on it, and there were two cars on that trailer. He'd, he must have seen people backing up fast, because he must have believed he had to slam the fucking accelerator down to the floor to back up. Kept fucking jacking, knifing, overcorrecting, and trying to do everything fast. Uh, sitting here because he was trying to back up next to me. I had my hand on the air horn waiting to pull it because I thought he was going to fucking hit us. I, uh, people are suicidal. Respect the trucks. Give them room. Don't be in such a hurry. We're there to get down the road, not to mess with you. Don't mess with us. Give us our room, please. And with those words of wisdom, I'm out. Hopefully I'll get this uploaded in the next, I don't know, week or so. Safe driving, everybody.